new block would be a true three-story complex with the top floor having a new intensive care unit. You have facility. the land accommodate that as well as yes, the we necessary do. parking? We do. Yes, we yes, do. Yes, I see. We've looked at all of that. And um, so that new block would be three-story with the top floor comprising the intensive care unit. That would have approximately 20 or 21 beds, that is nine intensive care beds and, and 12 beds and nine step-downs, approximately yes. 21. But we also recognize that we can include in this beds for the neonatal intensive care babies, and therefore we put an additional 45 beds there, for 48, sorry, for the neonatal, for the neonates. Then the neonates, which are scattered throughout the hospital in three different sectors, that area would now be freed up and I therefore see. we can create new bed space. Because you must remember that during the 90s, late 90s and 80s, etc., Princess Margaret Hospital was a 450 bed hospital. Today, it's 405. The population has increased. So you can see the problems that developed were a lot but smaller than we were yesterday. We are smaller, you say? Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Now, let us uh, discuss uh, the movement of uh, facilities with the capability of uh, dealing with sort of very serious injuries, operations alike, away from the central PMH. Is that, is that contemplated? And will there, for instance, be, considering the growth of the population in the south, uh, the southwest, uh, the, uh, in particular, uh, is the government proposing uh, emergency facility care in those areas? Will the clinics, or can the clinics, accommodate emergency services care? South Beach Clinic was designed to accommodate um, emergency to a particular um, degree. 60% um, of the patients that visit the emergency room at Princess Margaret Hospital is not emergency. They can be cared for within the peripheral clinics. Mm -hmm. But who am I or you if an individual has a sprain or injury or whatever to tell them that's not an emergency? As far as they're concerned, that's an emergency. Yes, yes. And therefore, it's an educational yes. process. Recognizing that, we feel that one, once you have the staff and the personnel, you continue to educate the public to utilize the peripheral facilities, that is, mm -hmm. South Beach, Elizabeth Estate, etc. In addition to that, um, we want to expand on the Market Street facility, put a new clinic, uh, a new health facility there on Market Street. Mm -hmm. um, just, um, you know, the, the um, property just at the brink of the hill. And if we have that um, primary facility and a step down somewhat where you can see some degree of emergency um, um, overflow from Princess Margaret Hospital, but you must have the IT system so that once a patient is seen at Market Street or even the peripheral clinics, we want to interconnect so that all speaks one language. Yes. In other words, one of the problems today, a patient leaving South Beach or whatever, there's no record and therefore when they arrive, the record may be displaced, you have to start mm -hmm. all over again and therefore that's duplication and cost. Mm -hmm. If we have the IT system in terms of interconnectivity, and that's what we're working on, so a patient even at Market Street, once we're transferring that patient to the Princess Margaret Hospital, they need hospitalization, a bed for example, what happens just one click with the mouse and bam, all the records are there and you have proper follow care and great savings in terms of duplication. Okay. Now, Minister, the other major concern, uh, and I've heard this expressed from within and outside of the uh, government health system, is a tremendous burden which immigrants are placing on the system. Uh, we do know that we have a responsibility to care for all of God's creatures. We are one in the spirit. But uh, there is a concern that 
there is an an overload so to speak is that real or is it really only the sort of bias and the prejudice of some of us I could not give the exact figures, but we do have um, a lot of immigrants that would um, come into our facilities. And Bahamians, you'd have uh, the mixed emotions. Some may say we should not treat others, I'd say you have to. But one has to look at, at the whole global picture, especially from a, a medical perspective. Suppose you had a non-national, be he legal or whatever, an illegal immigrant comes into your institution and he has TB, for example. Yes. Yeah. And you do not treat that individual yes. because of circumstance. You, you know, you, you don't know him or whatever else yes. you don't treat. Yeah. And that individual goes into the society. Yes. What yeah. happens is you can have a TB outbreak, yes. which has great impact on your healthcare system, on your community, and even on your tourist industry. And therefore, it's, it's, it's not just one simple problem. So uh, one has to look at very, the future. That's a very sensible answer, Dr. Minnis. Trust me. And uh, I often, uh, I, um, in the midst of the writings and the ravings of persons in uh, places, and you say things like that, and it seems to be, a, we have reached almost hysterical proportions when it comes to anything involving uh, immigrants, Absolutely. illegal immigrants, I should say. And it causes us to blind ourselves to simple truths and simple sensibilities. Huh? Uh -huh. Now, uh, we, we tend to be New Providence centric, though, as we speak on health. And we have in those, this far, far flung archipelago, uh, the needs of the many, of, of our dear brothers and sisters uh, stretching from Inagua straight through uh, to Bimini. How are we coping in that regard? Are all the major population centers equipped with clinics and medical personnel that can deliver at least the basic medical care to our citizens? Yeah, we have basic medical care throughout the Bahamas. One of the problems the family islands face, in New Providence and in Grand Bahama, all individuals have access to specialist care. A patient in the family island, for example, if they want to see a specialist, they have to travel all the way to New Providence or Grand Bahama. Um, that places a lot of financial strain on them, etc. They come here, they may possibly be canceled and postponed, they may see the physicians. So you know the problems that face. We recognize that it's impossible to have a hospital with specialists on every island. That's impossible. Um, World Health Organization recognized that that's an international um, recognition, recognized event. And therefore, we have introduced, um, and we use your term, because you always talk about one Bahamas. One Bahamas, yes. We have what we call commence our construction of our health bridge to the future. Yes. Meaning that we, can, we bring the Bahamas as one landmass, not yes. separated by, by water. It's one yes. Bahamas. Yes. And therefore, we have been introducing a telemedicine program where individuals within the family islands would have access to specialists here in New Providence. They can be examined by a specialist here without having to travel to New Providence, and the specialists don't have to travel there. Now, we are doing it island by island and moving um, progressively. Mm -hmm. We have been successful in the program in Abaco, and we, had, um, we start... Um, patients can have a, an opinion um, by a specialist here in New Providence. We've started uh, a skin clinic, a dermatology clinic. We have specialists here, Dr. Herbert Orlando. He don't have to go to Abaco. He can remain here. Abaco is booked in the clinic in Abaco, and they go to the skin clinic in Abaco. And right here in New Providence, Dr. Orlando would examine them. I see. We had just commenced that program in February, mm -hmm. and in a matter of one month, we have Dr. Lando has seen 42 patients, and he had detected three patients that he thought needed biopsy, and one had cancer. I see. Now you can imagine, by remaining here, he's been able to diagnose one individual with cancer. Imagine what that would have cost the healthcare system in the future. Yes. That individual, his family, he had to come here. Telemedicine. That's Telemedicine. right. Telemedicine. Oh, that is uh, very progressive.
massive uh, move in terms of uh, improving the health and accessibility to health. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Health care. Uh, but of course, it's the preventative side too, isn't it? Doug? There is. There is. And uh, I heard, uh, I listened to a program. I thought it was being driven from the Ministry of, was it driven from the Ministry of Health? Um, Ministry of Health and, and National Insurance. And National Insurance, yes. Uh, the, the, the preventative uh, medicine and uh, the advice. Uh, is that going to be carried nationally and particularly into the schools? Because, you know, I find that when you teach children, particularly those who are young and uh, from primary really up to the secondary, they can, you can inculcate into their minds certain uh, lifestyles or appreciation of lifestyles that will last for a lifetime. It's like the ABCs. You can't forget <laughs> them, huh? Yeah, those programs are going to school and um, a part of the prescription drug plan is a preventative arm. Um, we already started uh, what you call the, the Healthy People Program, um, Get Well Bahamas, um, where um, 40 individuals uh, go through a particular health, health program. But in terms of the schools, um, what we're doing is um, we would commence a program educating the kids as to the benefits of prevention, and therefore um, there may be some essay competition, for example, so that all schools would become involved, so at the end of the day they get some form of, of, um, of award, and there may be some artistic competition. So we're trying to get the schools involved. But besides that, we know that one of the problems are individuals may not necessarily eat healthy meals themselves, and therefore within the school's lunch program, we have involvement of the nutritionists to ensure that they have well-balanced meal. One of the problems we face is that yes, you may give individuals healthy meals within the school setting, but when he leaves and go outside, you get the tuck lady outside <laughs> yes, selling yes, candies, yes, tootsie rolls, yes. and, and whatever else. And um, we have not reached the stage like uh, um, some parts of America, where within school zones, mm -hmm. nobody can sell those type of foods within mile, miles within the school zone. And in fact, um, a McDonald's or Burger King or whatever cannot be within certain school zones, you know. So okay. we've not reached that 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 level yet. Well, uh, Dr. Evan Minnis, uh, Minister of Health, uh, we're going to take a break now. Let me come back. Uh, we are going to talk on some other matters. You know, I am uh, <laughs> one who uh, appreciates, as I undoubtedly you would, uh, that a minister is a minister of the whole government and speaks across the board <laughs> on government matters. And then now we're going to go into the deep blue sea after the break. <laughs> this dinner. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Home of the Whopper is offering you a stunner deal. Yes, Dr. Hebert Minnis, the member of parliament for Kalani and the minister of health in the Ingram administration. Now, Dr. Minnis, we talk about the health of the nation. There is a garbage problem, garbage collection problem here in this country. And, well, well it is affecting me, so I speak from a personal perspective. And uh, I made my a point to inquire uh, in the east as well as in some areas in the south. And I know that there's a major difficulty there. What, what, uh, uh, what is the plan to alleviate what is becoming a very you know, tr trying problem. I think, um, well, that falls under the Ministry of Environment. Yes, but you're the minister. No, I'm not. No, no, but you're the minister. <laughs> <of the government. laughs> and um, there, there are some challenges yes. um, with um, collection um, in terms of, of overtime, etc. Um, the Hemans generally, um, in terms of the environment, them in general, you know, you don't want to say the word, you don't want to say, uh, um, some believe they have monopoly on nastiness or whatever, and they may throw things all over the place. But I think um, at present, Captain is looking at um, how we can have some um, private involvement, be it from local contractors um, who would be a 
assigned to different areas and therefore you'd have a more adequate collection. Um, we're looking at... Uh, are there the availability of the garbage vehicles? Uh, because uh, we are hearing uh, that many of the trucks are broken down and, uh, and, I, and this has an impact upon health issues as well, doesn't it? If there's garbage that you can dispose of. I'm not talking about garbage thrown on, thrown on the roadside, uh, Minister. I'm talking about the, the, the garbage, which is uh, the household garbage uh, collected in the bins for collection by the ministry. I think when, I think when we first came in, in office in, in 07, there was a serious problem in mm -hmm. that, um, if my memory would, if my um, um, recollection is correct, I think we only had about seven or so trucks that were functional. Mm -hmm. And we embarked on a program where we had new trucks um, mm -hmm. come in and um, supposed to continue such program where from time to time you have new trucks um, to, to assist with the collection. Um, yes, if uh, so we have quite a number of new trucks, but if there's a, if any trucks um, were to become um, non-functional, mm -hmm. then that would pose a problem. Um, um, you would then run into the problem but over, over time. But are you hearing this? in other areas are you for instance are you hearing in your constituency that there's a garbage collection problem from time to time we do I and see. Um, my constituents um they would inform us um right away because sometimes there may be a delay in a particular area you may hear constituents saying that um nobody has been in their area for two weeks and we'd become very concerned and we would um, contact them in, in, in Ministry of Environment, find out what's, uh, what's the issue. And a lot of times um, the problems may be um, um, over time. Um, now your constituents speak very well of you. Uh, Minister, I'm going to read something here and then I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Allen. I wish to commend Dr. Minister for the exemplary work that he's doing is in his capacity as Minister of Health. There have been a number of positive results which have been achieved under his leadership. Uh, we look forward for further improvement in health care in the Bahamas under his watch. In addition to his cabinet post, Mr. Dr. Minutes exemplifies all of the positive and productive characteristics of what all members of Parliament should aspire to. The constituency for which he represents continues to receive his attention and always kept abreast of matters that affect the area. He's constantly and consistently involved in the constituency. And I applaud him for his A-rated performance. Continue to do extremely well. Regards. Now, Minister, <clears throat> there are concerns, very significant national concerns. For instance, crime, unemployment. Now, your constituency, if I appreciated from the map is one representative of, of all the socioeconomic systems of the country. Uh, low, low income, low middle, middle, uh, middle, high middle income and high income. Am I correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, 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 is there that concern of crime within your area or sh I should ask you early to come in generally of crime in the Bahamas. We realize, we recognize that crime, communities can do quite a bit. And therefore, what we have done in the Kalani constituency, most of us would have come from the Over the Hill community. And we essentially knew all of our neighbors. We knew everybody. If somebody new came in the area when we lived in Bain Town, you knew. If something happened, you knew. Um, if you did not speak to somebody in the street, good morning or whatever by the time you get home your parents knew and therefore taking what has happened in the past we tried to introduce that into the Kalani constituency and what we've done is divide the constituency into about um, nine different areas and encourage individuals to establish homeowners association and therefore you would have the Oaksfield Rock Crusher even Rock Crusher has an association you love Highland Park, you love Skyline Lakes, Lake Cunningham, etc. And what we try to do is, if you have a homeowners association, it means that and you meet regularly, you would know everybody within your community. 
and if there's any problems, we tend to communicate with each other. You have been encouraging that. Yes, yes. And um, we've met um, some areas already had homeowners association, and we try to strengthen them and work with those that did not, that does not have uh, associations. We find that works very well. Not only that, but if there are job opportunities, we can inform the executive personnel of the association who can disseminate that information um, to to other members of that community. We have a very good um, internet um, um, communication network, and therefore, once there's job opportunities, um, or if an individual need extra employment, employee or whatever, they may inform us, and therefore, we have a, 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 a catalog of um, individuals who need certain jobs. We may do the screening in terms of them meeting the qualification, so not to bombard you with 50 individuals. But we would not know the individual's political affiliation or whatever. But they meet the qualification, we'd send them down to you. These are who we recommend, whatever else. And we ask the community to try and help each other. We find that works very well. Not only that, but we use the community as our eyes on the street. In other words, just like how you mentioned you were talking about the garbage. If the community recognized as a problem, we have a, a communication network where they would automatically inform us, and we would automatically inform the various agency that this, there's a problem here. The street lights are not working here. There are potholes here. There's a problem with rodents here. There's a problem there. And we would ask the community that um, if you do not have a positive response within seven to ten days, then inform us again so that we can deal with it again. Here's one of your constituents uh, with an email asking, why is it that nothing has been done about our complaint to environmental health, about the disposal of vehicles, and they say photo attached, I don't have the photo, uh, since February 2010. What else do we need to do in order to have the cars removed? Can we pay someone to remove it? And will, be, will we be in the right to do so? Can we pay environmental health to do it? This matter of these vehicles scattered across the the areas. In fact, I, I suspect your area is, is one where people would just go and dump them in the bushes. <laughs> we, we would have such problems. And um, once the community inform us that um, such a problem exists, we would automatically inform environmental health and try. But even environmental health has its limitation, not only moving the cars, but once you try to move a car, you have to go through a process because the owner may still insist that's his good car and whatever else. So you have to go through a process where you put, uh, where you may place on the car, remove it, um, the 30 days um, notice or whatever. So you have to go through this process or you can run into to some problems. But um, we try to move, deal with those aggressively and we find all the different ministries work very, very well. You're finding the cooperation uh, amongst amongst ministers. Absolutely, in the absolutely. As well. Uh, it changes. It, it, it is not the same level from ministry to ministry uh, at times, but I suppose some fellows just tend to forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we are going to go to the telephone lines, 326-8255-322-3633. We are talking to the Minister of Health, the Member of Parliament for Kalani, Dr. Hubert Minnis, and uh, I described him earlier as one of the most productive members of the Ingram administration. And uh, from what I am hearing, one of the more popular uh, members of parliament. Uh, you do have ambitions beyond being the cabinet minister. My ambition is to ensure that I'm the best minister of health this country has seen while I'm in that ministry. Well, that's not, <laughs> well, that's, that's, well spoken. Well spoken, just <laughs> You know, you know these days, you, you must tread very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> to the telephone lines, issues of today. Speak, Bahama, speak. Oh, Mr. Minnis. Yes. Mr. Minnis, Calvin Robinson here. Good afternoon to you and your uh, good host, uh, Mr. Allen. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good. Mr. Minnis, sir, with regards to uh, the National Drug Prescription uh, Plan that's been in operation now for some time. I would like you to give us an update on the success of that so far, that's one. And secondly, my second question is dealing with the youth. In terms of this obesity uh, outlook that I see some of our young people are developing uh, especially, and I want to find out from you, if there is going to be a consolidated program between your ministry
ministry and the ministry of education so that we can keep our young people more healthier uh, as they go forward in the future. All That's right. all I have for you all today. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mr. Barkas. Those are two good questions. <laughs> yeah, the National Health Plan, I think, is working very, very well. Um, a lot of the patients are utilizing the private sector. And in fact, um, to date, we have paid um, in excess of half a million dollars to the private sector. Um, patients receive their medication quite um, readily. One of the complaints individuals may have, sometimes they may go to a pharmacy and um, they may be denied, um, uh, rejected. But the rejection is because individuals may have a particular disease that is on that has already been recorded diabetes for example and then they may discover that they their prescription may have medication not only for diabetes but for high blood pressure also but they were not cleared by their physician um, as a hypertensive and therefore that would have been rejected so it was just a matter of going back to their physician who would then fill out the form stating that they have hypertension also and would receive the medication. Yes. You know, you did ask about the uh, pro something we spoke about earlier, namely the obesity uh, program and, and children. Right. Now, with, with respect to children, um, with Ministry of Educa Education, we have a, a, a good lunch program where we try to ensure that they um, eat healthy food. Um, the foods are, are supervised by nutritionists to ensure that they're well-balanced meal. And um, education, ensure that they exercise um, frequently. Um, so we're working together to deal with that because we recognize that obese children leads to obese adults. Right. Back to the telephone lines, issues of the day, speak bombers. Oh, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Mr. Al, you did speak correctly about the minister. He is one of the hardest working ministers out there. Um, however, we have a little problem here in Grand Bahama. You know, they put an extension on the clinic down here, what they call a hospital. Uh, but the parking lot has not been extended. There's insufficient parking lot, and, you know, they have renovated that, extended that about four times, and the parking lot has not been extended. That's one of the problems. The pharmacists, they take very long to serve people. You know, the, most of the staff work good there, but the pharmacists take long to serve people. And the pharmacists, the administration always holding the meeting from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock with the pharmacists. The one on Carl Road, when the um, when the patients leave, if they leave at 10 o'clock, they close the pharmacist down. Why is it not open until 4.30? You know, mm -hmm. and the uh, the other problem we have here, when are we going to get our clinic that we, I mean, our hospital that we promised from 92? You know, you can say things tough now, but in 97, we had a robust economy. We can have it then. When are we going to get our hospitals? All right. Thank you so much, Carla. Um, well, he raised issues of, of, of uh, uh, service. At various, uh, you, 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 do, you do look into those matters, don't you? Do? Oh, um, I'm quite aware of problems he, he, he mentioned. With respect to your pharmacists in Grand Bahama, um, I mentioned earlier that we have a national problem in terms of shortage of pharmacists, not only in the public sector, but in the private sector. The drug plan alleviates a lot of the problems for us because now the private pharmacists become a part of our pharmacy um, um, conglomerate. He suggested that the pharmacy <laughs> now, goes into meeting now, at 12 <laughs> until 4 o'clock. A lot of times. That seems the, a bit like that. Yeah. No, is it? No, I don't think they go that uh, long. The problem is because of the shortage, there may be delay in receiving medication, etc. And that's why we put the strategic plan in place to ensure that we build up our capacity in terms of number of pharmacists. And I mentioned about the additional 14 pharmacists that we would have next year. Um, Coral Road, Coral Road, the problem there initially was parking. We've dealt with that um, as best we can. You, you mentioned, you asked about the new hospital. You fall within the same category as us in terms of moving forward the economic recession and therefore want us to look at the cost, etc. But we're moving and looking aggressively at a primary health care facility within Freeport so that you do not have to travel continuously to 8 Mile Rock or some other uh, some other area. All right, thank you so much. Uh, issues of the day, speak, Bob. Hi, good afternoon. Good I afternoon. would like to um, commend the minister for his work this far, but I just have a, one or two questions, um, and I will hang up and listen. And when the F&M 
became Empower Night Clinic was implemented. However, that is not being followed through specifically at Elizabeth Estates. Normally, if you go there by 5 p.m., they will say they're not taking any more patients or the number is closed. Second of all, I'd like to know about the cleanliness of the wards and the operation of plumbing within Princess Margaret. Very rare can you find a working bathroom, specifically if you go downstairs by the private surgical ward. All right. Coming by the um, cafeteria also, I would like to know our foreign nurses vetted on any future plans or expansion for the dialysis unit, and what about retraining for the nursing and the staff of the dialysis unit, because it appears as if um, that section is experiencing difficulties. Thank you so much, Carla. Well, that's a hard <laughs> and, and obviously they all have some uh, merit in them. Uh, uh, the what is the position? Uh, let's start from the from the end. Uh, um, with the dialysis, you the training and nurses. Now, dialysis, we have an ongoing program and um, to ensure that we have adequate number of dialysis nurses, and we have a, a, a cohort program in conjunction with um, the Royal College of Nursing in the, the UK, and I think we would have more than, than 30 or 40 nurses, more than 40 nurses, who would have trained in dialysis, so we're building capacity. Um, in, in terms of the uh, functioning of uh, toilets and the like, at the PFH. Well, that should not happen. Um, we have administrative staff that deal with that, and we have maintenance personnel who are on, uh, uh, who, who are supposed to deal with the hospital continuously. If there's such a problem, then um, um, we would ask patients to complain, uh, inform administration so that they can can um, put the, for, force the, the maintenance staff feet to the fire. You know, uh, Minister, I was at the opening of the, of the New Airport, American Terminal, uh, by the Prime Minister, and we went up an elevator that was functioning, escalator, functioning perfectly, and someone remarked, now the test is going to be whether a year from now that escalator still functions. Uh, <laughs> they, said, they, they seem to be suggesting that third world countries, we get it all right at the beginning, and then it start going badly. The maintenance procedures in place at PMH. Are you satisfied with that? No, I'm not. I'm not. I've always asked um, PMH staff. It's amazing when you look at PMH during the Christmas time when the Governor General is visiting, you would never believe that's the same PMH you saw yesterday. Yes. Everything is perfect. The wards are clean. The corridors are clean. It looks immaculate. Mm -hmm. And I've always asked them, why can't we treat PMH as if it's Christmas every day. I understand. If we were to aim at that, then we can resolve a lot of our problems. Now, let us, uh, uh, let us address the uh, first issue raised by the uh, caller, namely the failure of the uh, night clinic program, particularly at Elizabeth Estate, where she said the after 5 o'clock by they closed the door so nobody else could come. No, one of the problems, and it's a problem I'm dealing with, with the clinics, you've, I've heard repeated cries. Sometimes individuals go to a clinic at 5 o'clock, and they say they're not seeing any patients, they've reached their quota, their numbers, etc. Yet the clinic may be open until 8, 10 o'clock. They're not seeing and they're not taking any other numbers. What you find is sometimes the physicians may see small amount of patients in terms of numbers. What I've been doing, um, I have been going through the various clinics and spend a day in designated clinics without them knowing which clinic I'm coming to or when I'm coming. What I found, for example, one of the clinics that I went to, and I would carry my work there, so I'd spend the day there and just mm -hmm. operate mm -hmm. via the computer, so yes. I'd still be doing my ministry work, yeah. but I'm present. What I found at one of the clinics is the clinic was completely full. And a lot of patients, the, the staff, for example, had said they were already, they only seen 15 patients. Then the clinic was full. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have to be joking. Mm -hmm. 
And it's amazing, my presence being there, they saw all the patients before they took a lunch break. But under ordinary circumstances, because of um, poor accountability, what happens is you find that they may see a number of patients say they've seen that they, they've issued their numbers already and they're not seeing anymore. And that's a problem. And I find so that they may be turning away a very sick person. Absolutely. And it all has to do with accountability. And I find it just moving around to the clinics and they knowing I'm coming. But they don't know which one I'd be at all day. Um, you find that they're they're now seeing more patients and remaining. So the the medical personnel cannot come at ten o'clock and leave at eleven thirty. What happens once they know that me or some senior personnel is there in the setting? And not only that, if the individual comes at ten and I'm there and he's supposed to be there at nine. What it means is I send a communication, I ensure that something is on the file for the administrator because the administrator is not being responsible enough to ensure that these people are doing what they're supposed to. So once I um, put something on file, the administrator, the administrator must put something on file for the physicians. You know, Minister, there's a complaint, and it's been over the years, of the surly, the disrespectful, the unkind treatment uh, of patients, uh, particularly at PMH, uh, by a minority of staff, but it tends to leave a very ugly uh, impression of a facility that is so essential to the national uh, health uh, system. Uh, is, is there the, the, the not only I suppose the training, but the vetting of staff to ensure that those who would deal with the public as if they're a piece of dirt are not exposed to the public in that regard. Huh? Yes, we do, but you cannot always blame the problem on staff. Sometimes you can have patients who That's can be best. extremely disgusted. And yeah. um, you must remember an emergency room where staff is seeing so many patients. Emergency room internationally is an area where there's a early burnout out phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And then you are very stressed in that environment, and you have individuals who may be cursing you, um, whatever else. Yes. That places added stress yes. and strain on it. So it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. I appreciate that. I'm glad you said that. Issues of the day. Speak, Bahamas. Speak. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Allen, and thanks for taking my call. Good afternoon, ma'am. Afternoon, Minister. Afternoon. Um, you know, um, just to tap on to what um, Mr. Allen was asking about this just now, I, I think I understand what you're saying about patients being rude and whatever have you. But, you know, we have to look, I, I, we have to look at this thing um, um, in reference to um, artists. Is there a thing called um, sensitivity training at, with um, hospital staff, hospital and clinic staff? Yes, I hear, I hear that. Sensitivity training is, yes, is the thing because I know um, when I was at Atlantis, we do training periodically, and the main thing is that the customer is, is supposed to be always right. And many of patients who are concerned, afraid, and fearful, they're in pain. They don't know what, what's wrong with them. They don't know if they're going to drop down there the next second. I think that the medical staff should be trained as to how to handle these patients because I had two experiences. One with my three-year-old um, grandson at the South Beach Clinic. He, was, he had high fever, and he was turned away. It was after 4 o'clock. I had to threaten to, I called your office minister. And I must com compliment your, um, I think it's your uh, um, secretary. She was heck, she was fantastic. She turned me on to the chief nursing officer who sent me right back to the hospital, to the um, clinic, and they took care of my grandson, okay? And I must commend her on that. But the staff, and then my aunt, she, she's deceased now, she had breast cancer. Could you imagine standing on the line with tumors on your, you know, your, where the breast used to be or whatever of you, the breast hanging and everything else like that, in pain? And uh, uh, the pharmacist is going to be threatening to tell you or say something that, well, don't forget, I have to mix your medication. You know, oh I, there's, there's a thing called sensitive, yes, sensitive yes. sensitivity training. Yes. And I think, um, Minister, um, Minister I, I hope you are there for the duration of the, you know, the time. And if you are re-elected, I hope you continue to be better so of um, health. Because I think you're a good person, you have a good heart, and you mean well. But I think we need more sensitivity training in the medical field. One more um, question, Minister, in reference to what, what is the relationship between your ministry and the National Security Ministry with the prisoners who have 
drug um, problems with as far as rehabilitation at the prison. I'll hang up and I'll listen. Thank you. Well, and obviously, intelligent lady, and Minister, if I may make a comment on one uh, statement she made, she said that she called uh, your office, your secretary referred her to someone else. Now, many other patients don't have the intelligence, not, or, 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 or let me see, are not uh, uh, as courageous, uh, as aggressive to take that particular position. And, and so they would be turned away and a three-year-old would have gone away with high fever. The boy might have fallen down dead. But you, you hear what she asked about right. the sensitivity training aspect. Two points. I'm glad she brought that up with the sensitivity training because I recognize that there could be a weakness within the health sector. Not only the health sector, but um, there's a service problem within the government sector, yes. not just health, yes. government. Yes. And therefore, the Ministry of Health recognized that we have had discussion with Atlantis and we are a part of that program to yeah. try to resolve oh, and improve oh, you our, yes, yes, to try and improve mm -hmm. our service. So that's the initiative that health has done. Um, with respect to individuals having a complaint, um, we would advise them once they have, they're not happy with their service or whatever, then they should have report that to the administration administrator at the Princess Margaret Hospital. There's an administrator there, there's a, a chief of staff who's in, in charge of the physicians, so you can deal with that matter right there. I see. She asked something about the relationship between your ministry and national security and the treatment of persons, uh, it, prisoners uh, who have drug uh, problems. Well, we have um, psychiatrists on staff and therefore we do the necessary counseling by both psychiatrists, psychologists, and ensure that they get medication yes. and necessary right. counseling. Back to telephone lines. Issues of the day. Speak, Bahama. Speak. Um, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, good morning. Good day, ma'am. Good Brian. afternoon. We have, we have passed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm calling to apologize for the comment that I make from a couple of people from one in the All right. Thank I want to apologize so to Tina Francis. All right. Thank Chippewa. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You uh, had uh, some unfortunate cop, uh, person make some rather unfair calls. Issues of the day, speak Bahamas. Good afternoon to you and your guests. Good afternoon. Yes, I'd, I'd like to um, find out, is it possible for, for the hospital to have a complaint unit? Because it looks like only the police are a complaint unit in this country. Um, because you have um, other government services where people have, have complaints as well. And and I just wonder now if, if it's possible for them to have a complaint unit where you could report these matters because, I mean, um, I have had bad experiences as well as, well as at the hospital. And, you know, it makes me feel as if, like, either some senior person or, or the minister himself have to be sitting in in order for me to get good service or I have to wait till Christmas while the governor general walking around. <laughs> <laughs> so well, my thing good. is, um, is it possible for a complaint unit to be put in place so people, people could make um, complaints? satisfied with the service, um, or could, could, is it possible I could get the number for his uh, secretary, like the lady spoke earlier, where she was able to contact the secretary and she was able to get exemplary service for her grandchild and the son and All right. Well, <laughs> is, there, is there anywhere where persons who are not being properly served, or shouldn't there be within the health system some... Uh, Number one can call and say, listen, man, I've been up there waiting on the line forever and ever. It may just be a gripe line, but at least one or two of those calls will be very well genuine. The phone line itself is an excellent um, idea. We do have service reps who would walk around the institution, various different wards, emergency room, etc. Mm -hmm. And if there's a problem or complaint, the service rep is supposed to deal with that. Um, individuals are posted and, and, and deal with that. Um, we do have questionnaires also so that you can report on your treatment, etc., what the staff, what the service was like, and we follow up on those. Um, if you're not happy with that or have difficulty with 
questionnaire and the service rep, then we'd advise you to see um, the med if it's a, a problem with the doctor, you can see the medical chief of staff who's located in the administration building, or a problem otherwise, you can see the administrator. Are they accessible though? I mean, you go there, they, they won't say, see you uh, next month. No, so no, no. They are, they are very accessible. Uh, uh, very how accessible, accessible are you, Minister? Uh, do, you, are you, uh, do you, from time to time, uh, listen to the concerns of the uh, patients in the hospital? Uh, by all means, um, I would do um, um, regular walkabouts and therefore I'd know what's going on, um, not only with the, the hospital, but the clinics also. And um, most uh, Bahamian population knows that I'm, I'm out um, five o'clock every morning exercising, and it's not unusual that I would meet people out there waiting for me, yes. and knowing, <laughs> knowing that five o'clock he's going to be here or there. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I reach a uh, place of the other day with a couple of congregants, a couple of congregants, and then uh, you run it past. <laughs> so, uh, Minister, we'll take a break here, and... Uh, when we come back, we'll go immediately back to the telephone lines. The numbers to call, 326-8255-322-3633. We'll take a break. <laughs> to provide parts for Korean and Japanese direct vehicles. Find parts for Honda, Toyota, Isuzu, Hyundai, Kia, Daihatsu, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, and more. Full gasket sets from 2684, radiators from 132.16, water pumps from 2814, universal fuel pumps from 5075, brake pads from 2258, and so many more parts at incredible prices. Japanese and Korean direct cars. No worries. You can find it at AID. All you really need and more. And more. And more. And more. And more. The Stunner. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. Home of the Whopper is offering you a Stunner deal. The Stunner. The Stunner. For a limited time, when you order a Whopper or any large value meal combo, prepare to be stunned. Get BK Signature Milkshake free with any large value meal combo. The, the Stunner. Stunner. 12 ounces of frosty goodness. Get your free milkshake today from Burger King. From Burger King. Where you can have it your way. Breakfast not included. So, you're about to retire. Looking forward to kicking back with that nice chunk of change, huh? How long do you think it'll last? 10 years? 20 years? It could last the rest of your life if you put it in a Family Guardian immediate annuity. Your retirement savings can be structured to guarantee regular monthly payouts plus interest for the rest of your life. Make sure your golden years stay golden with a Family Guardian immediate annuity. Call Family Guardian today to invest in an immediate annuity for a better life. Family Guardian, a subsidiary of FamGuard. Lampkin, I was telling you about my new wind series of rectified porcelain. If you could recall, I was telling you that the variety of size is vast. The patterns which you could come up with because of the difference in size are absolutely endless. The wind series of porcelain come in 6x6, 18x18, and 18x36 inch tiles so straight you could draw plans with them. And these beautiful tiles come in mosaic sheets as well that can be used in the kitchen and in the shower. If I do say so myself, this wind series is one of the most spectacular series I ever had. The wind series of rectified porcelain at Pinder Tile. Uh, welcome back to Issues of the Day, Bahamas. And I have here the Minister of Health, the Member of Parliament for Kalani, Dr. Hubert Minnis. And obviously, uh, he is a man who attracts a lot of attention because from the time I said we go to the phone lines, the lines have been lit, and so we'll go immediately to the lines and we take your calls. Issues of the Day, speak, Bahamas, speak. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm fine. Um, yeah, I, I was to the hospital um, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm a person with back, a back problem. And I was feeling unwell. I went to the hospital to ask an emergency. Um, after sitting there for about three, four hours for service, um, they gave me an, uh, a trip. This is a grab trip. And it made me feel drowsy and dizzy. And after sitting there for about three to four hours, five hours, Thank 
you so much, Carla. Uh, she raises a, a, an issue. Uh, are there are cots available in that area? Well, she's absolutely right. Um, uh, space is, is limited, and that's why I said recognizing the problems we face. We're moving the general practice clinic out, and therefore we're going to expand easterly, and therefore we will have the resolve all of that problem. What is the time frame? The general practice clinic, um, that should be out for or, um, looking at April. And then we would commence the renovation right away with the eastern sector of, uh, of the emergency room. And construction on the, on the general practice clinic? That is ongoing now. That oh, is I ongoing see. now, I so see. that should okay. be finished next month. All right. Back to the lines. Issues of the day. Speak, Bahamas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. I was really hyping for today and found out that this week is renal awareness. And I'd like to ask the minister a few questions. Uh, yes, please. Reference to the cost of individual of individuals getting dialysis treatment for one person, uh -huh. and how much of that is how much of that is taken out of the budget for those persons. I'd also like to know the minister's views on prevention of chronic diseases such as hypertension and diabetes that lead to persons having to take having to get dialysis. And is this um, sustainable? Keeping people on putting people on dialysis. Um, surgery done 
on Thursday past, I have the eye surgery done. And on the 28th of March, sorry, on the 28th of February, I had to go and pay the money to use to see her. But at that time, they refused to give you what they call a top sheet or a receipt um, for you to show that you have paid what you had to pay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Hello? you. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. And um, I have to wait until the morning of the 3rd to go on the line down by the um, the pharmacy where other people is in this line who is not even having a procedure that morning, maybe making an appointment with the doctors and stuff. It is very inconvenient. I got there. It's a good thing my husband went with me. So he went on the line where I, I reported the eye ring. And it took him about nearly an hour to come back with that top sheet. Yeah. And I feel if you're going to have the, the, the morning of the, instead of waiting for that morning, if they can't give it to you before, maybe they should have a special line or somewhere else where you could go into the computer, see that it's paid, print out it has to be, so you could just move on. All right, thank you so much. It's very inconvenient, Melissa, so I would like very much for you to look into that. All right, thank you so much, Carla. You know, these callers all mean well, Minister, and they are bringing the the, the, the woes and sometimes the difficulties uh, of the nation uh, uh, to, particularly in so, in so far as Princess Margaret is concerned, uh, to your door. And you would have someone who monitor uh, these type calls, wouldn't you, uh, at the ministry? Oh, believe me, they're, they're listening. I, I, they're listening. <laughs> so all those problems that, she, that, that was mentioned, those problems are being addressed as I speak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Issues of the day. Speak, Bob, speak. Issues of the day. Hello? Yes, you're on. Speak, Bahamas. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Allen, Dr. Minnett. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Stephen Carey. Yes, sir. I'm a resident of Kalani. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Minnett, I'd like to congratulate you on the, the, the job you're doing as the Minister of Health. However, I have a few issues that deal with Kalani specifically that I would like for you to, that I would like to air with you, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, please. Okay, the first one is, as you know, I have been um, agitating for proper street lighting in the Westwood Villas areas for years now, and I'm wondering if you could let the people in Westwood Villas who are listening to this program know why we are the only subdivision in Nassau that does not have proper street lighting. Yes, Mr. Carey, I'm quite familiar with um, your problem. You email us quite regularly. Um, your area, unfortunately, has um, what we call the solar street lighting, and BEC, we've been dealing with that continuously. BEC has a um, problem with those solar lighting, and um, they have changed them on numerous occasions. And in fact, you would have um, recalled that many times they're changed or they're on today, and three days later, um, they're problematic again. I think now that the government is paying BEC so much money per month, for the street lighting, that should help to resolve a lot of the problem because the responsibility would now be on BC. We cannot, as government, pay you, be it $1,000, $1 million per month to ensure all of our street lighting. You're being paid up front, and therefore, you can deal with those appropriately. All right, Mr. Gary? Yes, I have this, this two other things, yeah, please. please give, uh, give them both uh, so that you can hang up and allow the minister to answer, please. Okay, also, as you know, uh, Mr. Minister, that I have been... I've uh, talked to you a few times about uh, the Bahama closing of the Skyland Drive Road when this project gets going. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering why, when, when, when traffic is probably the, the third most vexing problem in New Providence, that the government has agreed to, to close off Skyland Drive to facilitate a, a golf course for the Bahama project. Yes, and your next question, please. The next question is, a few years ago, I was I was trying to get some derelict vehicles removed from the Westwood Village areas, and I was told that uh, a massive cleanup of this was being started in the east, and it would eventually get to the west. I'm wondering if you could tell me who is the best person to call to get derelict vehicles removed from the side of the streets, and are they ever going to get into the uh, the Cable Beach area to start removing these derelict vehicles? All right, thank you so much, Carla. Hang up and let the minister respond, please. Well, Mr. Carey, with respect to the vehicles, um, you need not call anybody. I can assure you that um, members from the Kalani constituency are listening, and 
and I can assure you that the necessary email has already gone out to the appropriate authority to deal with that. Um, I don't remember what the other issue was you, I, oh, the BAMA, um, that's a long, um, ongoing discussion and, and um, yeah. I can deal with that at another time. Uh, the, the Prime Minister is your constituent, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he lives in West Villas. No, he lives in the Grove. In the Grove, that's as, right. As a, matter of fact, the Grove. <laughs> as a matter of fact, all all Prime Ministers were constituents of Kalani. Prime Minister Ingram is Kalani, Christie Kalani, oh, and my. Finman is Kalani. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you, 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 may, you may not be Prime Minister, but you have represented <laughs> We'll take a break now, and when we come back, we'll take the other calls, the callers who are waiting in rapid uh, succession. Thank you so much for holding. Minister, he still got you back with his 99 cent a square foot Legos white special. Uh, Minister Hubert Minnis, uh, Minister of Health, I propose to take very quickly uh, uh, the, the calls. Uh, I'm asking the callers to be mercifully brief, and afterwards, a Minister, you may wish to answer as many as you can. And the lines are filled. Uh, let's go to the issues of the day. Speak, Bahamas. Good afternoon, Mr. Allen, and also to Minister Minnes. I wish to bring to your attention an issue that's personally happening at the dialysis ward, wherein they have the system whereby persons are not being able to go into the machine because they've assigned each person a chair. So until your chair is available, you won't be able to go on the machine, which means that you're spending lengthy times at the hospital waiting to go on the dialysis machine, and someone needs to look into that. Because if it's a first come, first basis, if oh. you're there from 6 o'clock in the morning, you shouldn't oh, have to wait on a particular chair. I see, I see. If a chair is available, you should be able to go on. Yeah, I appreciate what you're saying, ma'am. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll hear your issue. Uh, the minister will deal with all at the end of the calls. Issues of the day. Speak, Bahamas. Speak. Hello. Good afternoon, senor. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, minister. Yes. Every time I go to the, every time I go to the hospital for this, for this, for this thing, where they call for me, uh, um, cost free, right? Uh huh. I cannot get any medication. I cannot afford it. The medication is too expensive. I I spend hundreds of dollars on these, on these medications. And the medication is very expensive. Very, I tell the doctor I can't afford it. He's still giving me the medication, the, 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 the risk. And then sometimes when I go there, even though when I, when I, when I could, when I could uh, purchase it, I have, I have to go to the, to the, to the, uh, to the private, to the private pharmacy. And it costs, the medication costs, uh, fifty dollars, fifty dollars, uh, 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 fifty dollars a month. You know, for, 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 for. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Minister, I want, when we come, I want you to address that in terms of whether that falls within the uh, health prescription. Absolutely. Uh, issues of the day. Speak, Bahama. Speak. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Good, good afternoon. Minister, Minister Minnis. Yes. The concerns in the country is about hypertension, high blood pressure, poor diet. And I'm wondering whether or not if you have submitted to the Ministry of Education a menu to be served in the schools to our children in order to reverse this uh, epidemic we are about to have. Yes. All right. Thank you, caller. I'll go to the lines again. Issues of the day. Speak, Bahamas. Yes, good afternoon, Ms. Tavlin. Good afternoon. Your guest. Uh, no. My concern is about the wait for the medication at the, at the hospital. You have to sit and wait for a number. Then you have to turn around and you have to wait about two hours before they call your number. Then you have to go back and put in your prescription. You have to wait about two or three hours again to pick up the medication. All right. Thank you, caller. And I'll take this last call and then I'll allow the minister to uh, address all of the calls because he's been very studiously <laughs> making a note of each and every one. Uh, issues of the day. Speak, Bahama. Speak. Good afternoon. Um, my question isn't more on the, like a concern or anything. My question is more on the National Health Strategic System Strategic Plan. Um, I went through it and I saw like a lot of key priorities and one of the focuses on the allied health workforce. I just wanted to know from the minister 